praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is there any way to connect this camera so that it can face directly here? Yeah. Okay, so this is more like facing this one. Okay, yeah, I've seen it now. So here, that's the focus. Okay. Can I start? Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Viewers all over the world, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, I will talk to us today about God's power versus your enemy's power. May somebody be greatly blessed by today's teaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For spiritual battles and defending the faith, you need God in your life. For you to succeed in the spiritual warfare, you need God in your life. You need God to defend the faith. You need the grace of God. You need the peace of God. You need the joy of God. You need the love of God, child of God. You need the mercy of God. You need divine sanctification. You need divine edification. You need divine protection. And you need divine provision of that authority which you need or what you really want to conquer the powers of the enemies. May that be our portion now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jude 3 says, Ye should earnestly contend for the faith. The book of Jude 3 says, We should earnestly contend for the faith. Defend your faith. Defend your belief. Defend your convictions. Practice what you preach. Don't just be a confessional Christian. Be a practical, you know, professional Christian. If duty calls, child of God, rise up and defend your faith. Defend the glory of God. Defend the favor of God. Defend the mercy of God. Defend your calling. Defend the throne of God. Defend the properties of God in this world. By doing that, you are standing right with God. And may God help us to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 says, We do not war after flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. He said, We do not war after, <laughs> after flesh. We war against what? Against, you know, spiritual powers. We war against occultic powers in higher places. We war against evil forces. We war against enslavement. We war against predators. We war against pedophiles. We war against the Asi Semitics. We war against the racists. We war against the tribalists. We war against the occult, the corrupt people in our midst. We war against the corrupt judges, corrupt politicians. We war against those who want to destroy us, they want to send us to gas chambers. We war against the evil people, child of God. We war against them that say we will not make it. These are the powers we are warring against. We war against those that continue killing us for no other reason than being Christians. We war against those who enslave our daughters. We war against those who amputate limbs and arms. We war against those who destroy hopes. So our, we, our, our, our opposition is not just carnal, it's spiritual. So we need to, you know, fight them spiritually through fasting, through prayers. And when duty calls that we'll go for physical, we'll have to defend ourselves as well. May God give us the grace to do that in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Then, for us to really defend our own country and our lives, we need to really stand firm and we we'll start to stand in unity as Christians. We need to be a help to one another. We need to cooperate with each other. We need to share information. We need to share the resources God has given to us. We need to share and care. That's the secret of unity. It's by sharing and caring, looking after one another. The society's world is really measured by how it treats the weakest among, you know, how it treats women and the children and the elderly and the disabled, the downtrodden, the poor, the, the sick, and the hopeless and the homeless. That's how society's world is really measured. May God give us that grace, that understanding, that wisdom to really begin to look after the weak among us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke 11. Verse 21 says, When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. Luke eleven twenty one. 21. When a strong man armed, you know, he looks after his place, then his goods are preserved. As Christians, we need to defend one another. He's talking about we having like a fence against us, the fence of grace, fence of unity, fence of love, fence of tolerance, you know, fence of encouraging one another, fence of welfare, sharing and caring, so that we can defend our glory. We can defend our calling. We can defend our purpose of being called Christians. We can defend, you know, our faith, our inclination, our our training, our backgrounds. We can defend, you know, the real word of God, which is life, which is favor. God has spoken through us. May God help us to achieve this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Now, John 10 verse 11 says, The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. John 10 11. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Christians all over the world, when duty calls, are you ready to even surrender this life that you will win eternal life? Are you ready to know? To really supply goods, supply arms, supply ammunition, supply the courage, supply the brain power, the money, supply you know the wisdom, the intellect, the strategy for us to really fight. It's not just about coming to church going every day. Sometimes God has called you to plant churches. God has called you to sponsor missionaries. God has called you to really move out and look after the people that are submission the formation. God has called you to sponsor programs like this. God has called you to go out and win souls, print tracts, do evangelism. God has told you to give out, look for beggars, the homeless, the dancers, the poor, the homeless. Go to prison, visit. By doing all these things, you're like you're really helping, you know, to pull down the the, the, the pillars of darkness, and then you're helping to build, you know, the pillars of light. May God help us to do this in Jesus. Then we pray. A good shepherd give his life for the sheep. Are you willing to lay your life for your belief? Are you willing to lay your life for your convictions? Are you willing to lay your life for your Christian calling? Child of God, look into your life. Ask yourself if you're really in good terms with God. Ask yourself if you're doing well. Ask yourself if rapture is to take place and if you make it. Ask yourself if your life is Christocentric, Christ-centered, and Christocratic, christ root. Ask yourself, have you mortgaged your conscience because of politics, because of money, because of materialism, because of man, because of woman, because of wife, husband, because of beauty, because of imperialism, because of nationalism, you know, ethnicity and all those things, barbarism. Have you mortgaged your conscience? Are you still in the right standing with God, child of God? Is your life glorifying God? That's the, that's the question God is asking you today. Is your life Holy Spirit filled? Do people glorify God because of you? Do people say thank you God in the name of Jesus because of your life? Do people draw closer to God because of you? Or people are running away from God because of you? Ask yourself these questions. Is your light, your life a green light you know, to people that are downtrodden? Are you lifting out a finger? A hand to lift up people that are born, people that are poor, people that are weak. Are you out there going out to grab people that are in danger from the jaws of imbecility, from the jaws of domination, from the jaws of wickedness, from the jaws of you know destruction? Are you going there? Are you going and stretching out your hand to reach out to people that are you know hopeless and helpless and homeless? Are you going out to help? Are you not using your resources to help child of God? These are the questions God is asking you today. For you to really defend, you know, have that authority to defend. The power God has put in you by opposing the powers in the world. You need to transform. You need to be a generous giver. You need to be a cheerful giver. Not just giving, but you have to be a cheerful giver. You have to give out your all and if possible, die empty. God can only feed the empty. Look around. There are shoes you're not using. Give out those shoes to people that you know, don't have shoes. There are watches you're not using. Give out. There are clothes you're not using. Give out. There are houses you're not living into. Child of God, give out. Let people have homes. There are more, a lot of money stored up in your bank and all those things. Child of God, go and start giving some power of it to people. People are in need. Start sponsoring missionaries. People need to pay their school fees. People need to help. Yes, you didn't ask them to have those children and all those things. But when duty calls, child of God, obey. There's a song that says, When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When Jehovah calls me, I will answer. I will be somewhere walking for my goal. I will be somewhere. Oh, yes, I will be somewhere. Oh, yes, I will be somewhere walking for my goal. I will be somewhere. Oh, yes, I will be somewhere. Oh yes, I will be somewhere walking fellow him when he calls me. I will answer when Jehovah calls me. I will answer when Elohim needs me. I will answer. I will be somewhere walking for my God. I will be somewhere. Oh yes, I will be somewhere. Oh yes, I will be somewhere walking for the Lord. I will be somewhere. Oh yes, I will be somewhere. Oh yes, I will be somewhere 
Working for the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Blessings and glory and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and mind belong to the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Child of God, when God calls you, will you be available to answer? When he needs you, will he find you doing his work? If Jesus Christ were to come today, will he find you rapturable? Will he find you in grace? Will he find you in the state of faith for mercy? Will he find you in the state of obedience to his father, Jehovah Elohim? Child of God, ask yourself these questions. Or you're still procrastinating, you're still giving God time and conditions. Father, if you don't do this for me, I will not serve you. If you don't give me a husband, I will not serve you. If you don't give me sickness, I will not serve you. If you don't give me money, I will not serve you. If you don't give me permission, I will not serve you. If you don't give me wife and children, I will not serve you. Are you still giving God condition? Remember, He owns your oxygen. Galatians 6, 7, and 8 say, God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man so he will reap. Galatians 6, 7, and 8 say, Be not deceived, God cannot be mocked. Whatever he so he will reap. May He find us, you know. On, in grace and on grace when he's coming. May he find us working for him in obedience and love and truth and spirit in faith when he appears in his glory again to rapture us in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Now I get down again. Say fleshly might is no might for the power of God. So don't fear your enemies. Confront them. Confront your fears. Confront your imbecility. Confront your jailers. Confront your torturers. Confront your weaknesses. Confront your addictions. Is it sexual? Is it alcohol? You know? Is it materialism? Is it greed? Is it envy? Is it jealousy? Is it fear? Whatever you know you're addicted to, confront it. Addictions can really be overcome, child of God. Confront your addictions. You are not born a slave. You're born to be free. You're born to glorify God. You're born, you know, to be emancipated. You're not born to remain in that bondage. You're born and give you know in doubt intellect that you may glorify the name of God. Child of God, rise up to the calling. Rise up because God can give you the grace to overcome that which has been holding you in bondage. In Jesus' name. Amen. First Samuel 17 verse 45 says, Thou, good Lord, are coming to me with a sword and with a spear, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord. First Samuel 17 45. He said, You, good Lord, you foolish good Lord, you are deceived by your size and your height and your muscles. You are coming to me with spears. You're coming to me with arms and ammunition. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. Mm. Child of God, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Be righteous run into this and they are saved. No matter the situation you bring this world, as a word of God to back it up. No matter the problem you have in this world, as a word of God that contains the solution. All we need to do is understand the rhema, the essence of this world, and begin to excavate until we discover the solution. There is no problem in this world that has not got the word of God as a solution. It says, you, Goliath, that trouble that's coming to you now is like a Goliath. That sickness, that depth, homelessness, torture, marital problems, you know, mother-in-law, father-in-law, enemies at school, lecturers, teachers, you know, people that want to abuse your body, abuse your soul, abuse your spirit. People say you will never pass your examination, you never graduate. People say you never be promoted, you know, that you never be healthy. People that say you never, you never their dead body, can you marry and settle down? These are the Goliaths in your life. They are coming to you with arms and ammunition. They are coming to you with systematic destruction. They are coming to you with their worldly strategy. They are coming to you with materialism. They are coming to you with you know, little, little powers that are fleeting. Powers that are delusive. Delusional powers. You know, powers that never last. They are coming to you with the temporary powers they have. Little power they bestowed upon them. But we have to come to them in the name of the Lord. And they must be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I say that power that destroy Goliath, may that power begin to see, you know, see us at the point of our knees now and begin to destroy every negative power, every spirit of evil, every torture, every spirit of barrenness, loneliness, depth, poverty, every spirit of sickness attacking our life, every spirit of ignorance attacking us, every spirit of disobedience and rebellion attacking our lives. May God's spirit, may Holy Spirit of God begin to go and arrest and begin to destroy them now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Viewer, receive your favor, receive your blessing, receive your grace, receive your peace, receive your joy, receive the love of God, receive the sanctification, receive, receive the authority to overcome your temptations, to overcome that which confronts you now and become a better child of God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Elohim loves you. Elohim loves you. John 3.16 confirms it. 
He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever I believe will not perish but have everlasting life. Child of God, you can have an everlasting life. But that everlasting life, you have a portion now forevermore in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He said, That glory had come to me with a sword and with a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Second Chronicles 32, verse 8 says, With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord to help us and to fight our battles. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Second Chronicles 32, verse 8. He said, With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord to help us and to fight our battles. Everything the enemy is tempting us has to do with the flesh. Marriage, husband, materialism, cars, country, home, position, authority, political appointment, passing examination, you know, health, welfare, whatever in this world, everything we are tempted with has to do with the flesh. But Second Chronicles 32, verse 8 says, With him is an arm of flesh, that is with the world, with the enemy. But with us is the Lord to help us and to fight our battles. That's why I say in Exodus 14, verse 14, says, Hold your peace and I shall fight for you. Hold your peace. You that have found grace, we that have found favor with God, we should hold our peace. Hand over the troubles to God. Let God fight our battles for us. Psalm 50, verse 14, it says something. It says, Fulfill your vows to me. Hmm? When you have fulfilled these vows, they call upon me in the days of trouble. He said, I will answer you that you may glorify my name. Psalm 50, 14. Fulfill your vows to me. You promise to obey me. You promise to love me. You promise to keep my commandments. Fulfill those vows. You promise to help you know, in building the kingdom of God on this earth. Then you have fulfilled that word. Then 15 says, call upon me in the days of trouble. And I will answer it. Psalm 50, verse 14 and 15. Then that you that you glorify my name. God says he's willing to help you. He's willing to assist you. He's willing to help you solve that problem. That the glory may go to him alone. He confirmed the same word again in Psalm 91, 15 and 16. He said, because you've called me, I've answered you. I've rescued you. I've given you life, I've long life. I've given you prosperity. I've solved it. If you're among those, God is solving our problems. Now shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're among those, God is going to lift out of bondage, out of the chains. The enemies are used to tie our, our legs and our hands. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You that shout hallelujah now. That which you believe God to be solved, let that be solved for you in Jesus' name. We pray. It is solved. It is solved. It's solved. That sickness is going. That poverty is going. That loneliness is going. That money that is cut and that money has to be reconciled. The peace of God has to come back to you. The joy of God is back to you. The mercy of God is back to you. The love of God is back to you. Receive that now. Which have been believing God that's in line with the will of God for you in Jesus' precious name. We pray. Receive your children back. Receive your freedom. Receive your liberty. Receive your grace. Receive your joy. Receive your peace. Receive your salvation. Receive your property back. Receive your certification. Receive your qualification. Receive your job back. Receive your rest of mind. Receive your health and wealth back. Receive your glory back. Reconcile with God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I get down again. Praise the Lord. To Psalm 9 verse 19 and 20 says, Lord, let not man prevail but, but them in fear that they may know themselves to be but men. Psalm 9 Verse 19 and 20 say, Father, don't let men prevail. Don't let evil men that are attacking us and evil men that are attacking us prevail. But, Father, show yourself almighty that they may know that their power is in vain, that all powers belong to you. Ew. Psalm 9, 19 and 20 says, Lord, let not man prevail. Put them in fear that they may know themselves to be but men. Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Adonai. Jehovah Esh Okula, the consuming fire. Jehovah El Gibor, Jehovah El Hashamayim. Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Yahweh. May this Jehovah begin to meet us at the point of our knees now in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And we, the righteous, we run into this name and we are saved. We are not righteous by our handwork. We are righteous by grace, by the blood split on Calvary and that Calvary tree for us. That makes us righteous. He said, By power shall no man prevail. It's not by power, not by mind, but by my spirit. The spirit of God comes with the grace of God. May that spirit visit us now, begin to dwell upon our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, so it's of him that will let to him that run it. He said, I will bless whom I will bless. He's a powerful God. I thank God that we are among the chosen, the royal priest, the peculiar nation, chosen generation, people that are called after God's name. It's a privilege to be called a child of God. The highest you can be is a child of God. No matter how old you are, no matter what you have, no matter your qualification, God, you know, the highest you can be in this world is a child of God. That's why I say, I remain a child of God, no matter what happens. Child of God, bless you. 
Jesus Christ said, let the children, leave the children, let them come to me, for the kingdom of God is there. He didn't say leave the men, he said leave the children. It's, that's why, the, you know, by Bible even says, anybody that must enter the kingdom of God must be like a child. Vengeance makes us adults, but forgiveness makes us children. If you are still revenging, going for vengeance, you are an adult. You are not a child yet. But if you are still forgiving and all those, then you are a child of God. Faith makes us children of God. But doubt make, makes us adults. And Hebrew 11 verse 6 says something. Say without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's why I say all the scientists, all their qualifications, they still commit suicide. All the professors, you know, neurosurgeons, you know, chemical engineers, astrophysicists, you know, aeronautic engineers. Look at the nuclear biologists. They, at the end of the day, they commit suicide. World Bank leaders, presidents, governors, they think poison, they kill themselves. Powerful musicians, multi-billionaires, because they don't have peace in their life. They don't have peace. They think all the drugs in the world can give them peace, you know? All the beautiful women in the world can give them, handsome men cannot give them peace. That's why I see them, they, they're drinking alcohol, they're abusing their kidney and their liver. Some of them end up with, you know, sclerosis. They will end with various forms of cancers, dementia, you know, mental breakdown. Because there's a limit to what your cocaine can give you happiness. Cocaine can give you temporary happiness, but not real happiness. The real happiness comes with, you know, being in good terms with God. Finding peace with God, that's what I call happiness. Having one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, you know? Having God as a best friend. Having Jehovah Elohim as a best friend. That's what I call peace. There is peace in God. There is peace in God. And that peace can be found through God. If you believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the cross of Calvary. If you believe, then that peace will be your portion, child of God. Forget about your trials. Forget about your tribulations. Forget about your temptations. Forget about your poverty, your debt. Forget about the failure, disappointment. Forget about the betrayer. Forget about those who stole your money, who stole your property and your children. You can depend on God. And this God will make a way for you. You can depend on God. If you depend on God, child of God, God's grace is sufficient for you. God's grace will help you to fight your enemies and destroy them. Just the way David came in the name of God and destroyed Goliath. May God leave that pebble of faith, that pebble of love, that pebble of grace, that pebble of hope, that we know that will help us to defeat all the Goliaths in our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Receive that blessing. Receive your fruitfulness. Receive your husband. Receive your wife. Receive your breakthrough. Receive your own home. Receive your certification. Receive, receive your qualification. Receive the new job. Receive the new contrast. Receive the new appointment, child of God. Receive grace to overcome your enemies, to overcome your troubles. Receive grace to overcome your debt and your poverty and your imbecility. Receive grace to overcome miscarriage, child of God. Receive grace to overcome wicked husband, wicked wife. Receive grace to overcome wicked mother, wicked father, in law. Receive grace to overcome the enemies that want to destroy us with nuclear weapons. Receive grace. Hey! To overcome those who they want, to, they say they want to wipe us off the face of this earth. Receive grace to overcome these enemies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive grace to overcome those who cut off the head, who decapitate. Receive grace to overcome those who amputate. The people that destroy glory, who people that destroy destinies, people that destroy children, pedophiles, you know, religious fanatics, people that says unless you believe you die. No. Religion is a compulsion. It should be by persuasion. If you believe, tell them. You know, that's why in my book I say reason and dialogue. You reason, you dialogue. If the people, you know, we release the word of God, the spirit of God is what comforts. If the people, the people, the spirit of God, let them receive. They receive not. Fine. Not everybody must be saved. But may God help us to be among those that will be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Even with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he didn't save everybody. He said, as many as receive, he gave the power to become sons and daughters of the living God. You that is watching, I plead with you, receive. Receive the grace to become a child of God. Receive the grace to repent from your sins. Receive the grace to live your evil ways. To live spiritual poison. To live your occult. To live your second gods you're worshipping. To remove that which you're tying at your waist. To remove the, to remove the marks on your body. To remove the little two gods, the pendants you're worshipping as gods. You think they're protecting you. To remove the chains, you know, all these inanimate, all inanimate objects you're bowing down to. Little two gods you're serving. Receive grace to overcome them and turn to Elohim. Elohim, Elohim, the one and only right God, the God of Israel. Receive grace to come back to your father. He said, as many as come back to me, I will know as cast out. Come back the way you are. Come back as naked as you are. Come back with your foolishness. Come back with your sickness. Come back with your jealousy, your envy, your backbiting, your hatred, your malice. Come back. The spirit of God is enough to transform you into that which God wants you to be. No demonic power can stand the presence of God. That's why I said the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. 
Jesus Christ said, all power on earth and heaven has been given to me. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. That word was confirmed. Con Philippians 2, 9 and 11. The book of Philippians 2, 9 and 11. He said, because Jesus Christ was humble, Jehovah gave him a name above everyone. And Elohim gave him a name above everyone. And he said, at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. Philippians 2, 9 and 11. He said, because Jesus was humble, Jehovah gave him a name above every other name. He said, at the name of Jesus, every knee troubling you, every enemy standing against you, every sickness, every lecturer, every man, every woman, every government, every authority standing against you, they must bow in the name of Jesus. And they must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to whose glory? God. So everything, you're going to be delivered, you're going to be sanctified, you're going to have authority to overcome the powers oppressing your life, that God may take the glory. You remember when God bring the children, you give him the glory. When God bring the husband, you give him the glory. When God heal the sickness, you give him the glory. When God give permission, you give him the glory. When God set to you, you give him the glory. When God increase your property, give God the glory. When it's good, good, give God the glory. When it's going by glory, give God glory. When you're doubting, give God glory. When you're believing, give God glory. The sum of your life is to glorify God. You are created to worship God. Everyone that is a distraction. The highest you can do on this earth is to worship God. No matter how many how long you stay. I look at some millionaires, look at them dying from cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, different, different sicknesses. They are putting faith where there is no hope. We Christians, we put faith in God where there is a blessed hope. And this hope will deliver us. May you begin to partake in that blessed hope in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Then sometimes people see me on television or radio station preaching around, they don't understand. With all your education, with all your qualification. How can you be doing this? They don't understand. The only thing that gives me joy is what I'm doing now. Preaching the word of God. Examining the word, you know, the examination of this information. Pollination of the word of God. Propagation of this word of God. Speaking to people. Yes, a motivational speaker. But going out to reach, use that talent is given to me, that spirit of oratory to talk to people about God. Tell them about the good news. Tell them about the good news God brought to this world. The, the light God brought to this world that is called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That this light may, you know, help to erase the darkness in the life of people. That people will come to God of Israel. Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah Nisi, the God of Moses, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Esther, the God of Mordecai. That is the right and true God. Every other one is an idol. Right, the first commandment said, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other God before me. That God is called I am that I am. I am that I am. Elohim, I am that I am. God is who he is. God is all that God is. God is God. I am that I am. That's the one you should bow down to. That's the one you should worship. Any other thing you bow down to is an idol. You shouldn't bow down to any other force. You should only bow down to Jehovah Elohim. I am that I am in the name of Jesus. That him alone deserves the glory for your life, for your beauty, for your troubles, for your tribulation, for your years, for your days, for your seconds, for your months, and for your decades, for your eternity. He alone deserves, you know, deserves, deserves all the glory. He deserves the glory. So give him the glory, child of God. If you must overcome, if you must get the power to overcome the powers oppressing you, you have to give God for the glory for everything happening in your life. Setback, tribulation, delay, disappointment, termination of appointment, loss of election, and all those things. Give God the glory. Chukwuma, God knows. God knows the reason why you didn't get to that place. God knows why there is this delay. God knows the reason why you even got it. God knows why you didn't win. God knows the reason. God knows the reason why things turn out the way it is. God knows the reason why your mother left, why your father left. God knows why you're disappointed. God knows why your people you trusted betrayed you. God knows why you know you had that attack. Everything works together for good for them that love God. And I know you don't hate God. Everything is working for your own good child of God. Calm down. It is well. Oh God, them, it's going to be all right. Temptations may come. But the temptations come before promotion. Tribulation come before promotion. You know? Frustration come. Examinations come before promotion. So don't kill yourself in the winter of life. The summer will soon come. Yeah, the winter might be very cold and everything, but the summer will soon come. After this dark tunnel, there will be a powerful light. And that light will illuminate. That light will show the way. That light will bring joy. That light will bring peace. That light is found in the power of the Holy Spirit. That light is found in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That light is found in obedience to God through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That light is found in holiness, in glory, in peace, in joy, in cheerful generosity, in faith, in unity, in tolerance. In obedience to the word of God, revealed very powerful in the Bible. May God give us the grace to begin to get all this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I get down to Isaiah 31 verse 3. It says, 
Isaiah 31 verse 3 says, The Egyptians are men and not God. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, they all shall fail. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 31 verse 3 says, The Egyptians are men and not God. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, they, sh they all shall fail. Egyptians are men, not God. <laughs> when the Lord shall stretch out his hand, they shall all fail. Isaiah 31 verse 3. Egyptians symbolize ancient powers, authority. I want to say that the real power is in God, child of God. <laughs> the real power is in God. Where is the Egyptian in your life? Who is the Egyptian in your life? Is it your, your master, your boss, your governor, your, your lecturer, your best friend, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend? Who is the Egyptian in your life? That sickness, that trouble, loneliness, or torture, your debt, that monster standing before you, that Egyptian before you. Which authority? The Egyptian, is the, the Egyptian in your life is the, what you're taking as a God and worshiping it instead of Jehovah Elohim. That is the Egyptian in your life. Is it debt? Is it sickness? Is it security? Is it fear? Is it people that promise and fail you? People that say without them, you, they will, you know, without them, you will never make it. People that say you're illegal in Uganda, that you are, you're marital age, you have not married yet. You marry, you've not got children. You're, you're from a broken home. Your family is breaking down and all those things. People that say you're sick. People that say they're giving you date to die. Nah. What is that Egyptian in your life? People that are mocking you, saying, if we are God, if God is for you, let God help you. Don't allow yourself to be depressed by their words. Now then get their mouth. Let them talk. They have their mouth. Let them talk. Child of God, who is that Egyptian before you? I'm telling you to calm down because that Egyptian is not God. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, they shall all fail. Amen? Isaiah 31 verse 3. Them that curse you, they shall all fail. They shall all fail because the grace of God, the plans of God for your life will disappoint them. That's why Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. He said, I know the thoughts I'm thinking for you. They are thoughts of good, not of evil. I want to give you an expected end. We are watching the program. I want to give an expected end. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. God says, I know the thoughts I am thinking for you, child of God, my son, my daughter, my baby, my darling, my sweetheart, my honey. I created you. I chose you. I've organized how your life is going to work out. I know the thoughts I'm thinking for you. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13. They are thoughts of good, not of evil. I want to give you an expected end. <laughs> oh. God is thinking for us. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 said, Before I formed your mother's womb, I knew you. I chose you. You are the chosen of the Lord, child of God. You are special. You are celebrity. You are the chosen of the Lord. Once you are a Christian, you are a celebrity. Spiritual realm, you know, they know that you are a celebrity. Whatever you know, you are doing the secret. And you will not be proud to do it in the open. Stop it, child of God. It's not glorifying God. Whatever you are doing, you are not getting peace there. Stop it. Are you fornicating? Are you into adultery? Are you embezzling government fund? Are you betraying people? Are you gossiping? Are you backbiting? Jealousy, hatred, envy. You know, stinginess. You are tarnishing other people's image, casting aspersion on other people's image, you know. Pouring vituperations, child of God, stop it. It's not glorifying God. Are you blaspheming? Are you messing up, you know, the name of God? Are you making Christians lose faith because of your attitude, because of your character? Child of God, stop it. Stop it, stop it. It doesn't glorify God. Listen, you are sending things on what's up. What Reverend Fathers and Pastors so-called are doing? A man going to sleep with a goat to get spiritual power. Oh, why are you abusing a goat? Oh, see the other one. Say, want to build mansion for uh, for house for uh, for for church, Abi. You went to bury people at the foundation to get power. People are digging their grave. Everything in this life, every good thing in life, is free. And the free things in the life are the best. When God gives you gift, he gives you for free. He doesn't try to give me the gift he gave to me. No professor, no doctor, no lawyer, no lecturer like I say taught me what I'm doing. Praise the Lord. God who taught me. That's why today, they say I'll be a teacher to my teachers. That's why even when I talk to them, my lecturers, they, they shut up, they listen. When I talk presidents, listen. When I talk doctors, listen. engineers, listen. Scientists, listen. God has, he has given me wisdom. As I assist one, two, three, say the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has given me power to set, anointed me to give, set the captives free. To preach the good news that the year of the Lord has come. Those that are sick to lay hands and they get well. 
people that are hopeless to give them hope, people that are forced to comfort them, people that feel all hope is gone, tell them not to commit suicide, there is still hope. Their hope can be found in the word of God. People that are poor, help me to be rich. And as I'm doing this, the glory of God will continue to shine through me because I'm the light of the world. I follow my master, Jesus Christ, to say I'm the light of the world because Christ in me is the hope of my glory. This flesh is dead that the spirit of God may live. So you, as a Christian, ask yourself, when they see you, do they see Christ? When they see you, do they see favor? Do they see love? Do they see mercy? Do they see obedience to the word of God? Do they see absolute you know, obedience to the power of God? Do they see total submission to the will of God? When they see you, the people surrender say, okay, now that he's around, now she's around, that will be done, oh God. Child of God, ask yourself that question. Are you a soldier of Christ? Are you a co-light in the world? Christ is saying, I'm the light of the world. I am the way, truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father except through me. He said, he's no longer calling us as servants. He's calling us as friends, as brothers and sisters. Child of God, as a family of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is your life glorifying God? Are you the black sheep in the family? Ask yourself that question. Pastor, Pope, Imam, choir leader, usher, head of the ushers, head of the choristers, and sleepy sleeping with the pastors and members. Ask yourself that question. People that steal money from the church, tithe and offering. Ask yourself that question. People that take the money that they gather in the church, they used to go and buy mansions and do it. Why the people in the church are suffering? They used to build the build schools. Why they, they cannot allow members of the same church that contribute the money to you know, afford that school fees. Ask yourself questions. They used to buy private jets. Why are people in the church are suffering? People don't have one room to live. Ask yourself a question. You take their thousands, you take their millions. At the end of the day, some of them don't even have bus pass. People are so gullible. You exploit their ignorance. You exploit their vulnerability. Women that have trouble relationship. Some of them, they end up sleeping with them, mess up their lives. Ask yourself that question, child of God. Ask yourself that question. Is your life glorifying God? Is your life glorifying God? Are you exploiting the people that God brings to you because you want to, because you want to like show off? <laughs> the judgment will start from the house of God. Be careful you that think you stand, lest you fall. Be careful. You put words in the mouth of God. Say, God, don't say the Lord. Which language did God tell you that thing? You say you're speaking in tongues. You're sparking in tongues. People are watching in you. <laughs> you're deceiving yourself. Coca-Cola, Fanta, Rubo, Sento, Rubo, Coca-Cola. Gri, gri, gri. You're messing your life up. God will help you. Prophet, God will help you. Prophetess, God will help you. Repent. Pope, God will help you. Archbishop, Reverend Father, Monsignor, repent. General Overseer, President of the Ministry, repent. God is speaking to you now through his servant. Repent. Repent. Because it will be a terrible thing to lead others to heaven and you go to hell. Repent. Today is still early. Repent. I'm discussing with you like this, like a dialogue. Repent, you child of God. Repent and turn back to God. How long shall a man go wrong to realize before he realizes that he's going wrong? How far should a man go and the wrong way to realize that he's gone wrong? How long shall a woman go before he realizes that she's going wrong? Fornication is evil. Adultery is evil. Backbiting is evil. All these things are evil, child of God. Beheading people, kidnapping, assassination, armed robbery, all these things are evil. Poisoning people is evil. Taking people's glory by force is evil. Exchanging people's glory is evil. Exchanging people's destiny is evil. Going to bury things in the people's landed property is evil. Taking people's money and taking to juju is evil, child of God. You say you're a beggar, they give you money as a beggar. You, instead of you to you are, you help yourself, you're going to go into the destroyed place where the people are getting it from. Child of God, God will help you. They give you power and authority. You enter government, you embezzle the fund. Money meant for millions of people. You're not going to put it for your family. The karma of those one million people will attack you and your family. You're digging your grave. Repent, the child of God. Repent. You're giving that position to really better the life of others. Repent. Repent. You that are watching from South Africa, repent. You that are watching from Cameroon, Congo, repent. Ivory Coast, Africa, Asia, Australia, America, Europe. I'm addressing you. I'm talking to you now. Repent. Latin America, repent. God loves you. Change your evil ways. You warlord, repent. You drug dealer, repent. That's a peddler in cocaine and heroin, repent. Child of God, repent. God loves you, repent. Live your evil ways. Live your evil ways. Come back to God. Come back to God. He will help you to overcome. He will help you to overcome. He will help you to become that which his perfect will you don't want you to be. Psalm 127, 1 and 3 says, Except the Lord build the house. The labor in vain that build it. Except God watch over the city. The watchmen walk but watch but in vain. He said, it is useless for us to wake up very early and sleep very late. He said, I will bless whom I will bless. 
He says, children are heritage from the Lord. And happy is the man whose house is full of them. May our life be full of children in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are some people when they just sleep together once after, they just get babies. Some people have been doing IVF year in, year out. Nothing ends and it's carried. Continue coming. Run back to God. Children can only come from God. It's God that gives children. God that gives wealth. God that gives life. God that gives grace. God gives salvation. God gives. God gives. Proverbs 10.22 says, The blessings of God make it a man rich. I did not sorrow to read. May the blessings of God begin to make us rich. You that's watching program now. May no sorrow be added to it in Jesus' name we pray. Proverbs 18.22 says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. If you have found a wife, if I have found a good if I have found a husband, you have found a good thing, child of God. Favor is supposed to follow you. So if there's no favor within that marriage, within that relationship, ask yourself questions. If this is what God has ordained for you, temptations will come, but then the grace of God that goes with you, you know, getting a life partner should be able to help us to overcome those temptations. God hates separation, God hates divorce. But then, if that relationship is going to destroy your destiny and your glory, come out of it. If you're going to destroy your salvation, come out of it. It's better you enter the kingdom of God with one as one one arm man or one leg man or one eye man than to enter whole to hell with your whole body. If you know the, the relationship that bring you trouble, cut off from it. The best relationship you have is the one you have with God. Because at the end of the day, he won't ask you how many women, how many men you marry in this world, how many children you have. He will ask you, what did you do with your life? What did you do with your destiny? What did you do with your glory? What did you give with the time opportunity I gave to you? What did you do with the qualification? What did you give with the talents I gave to you? Remember, the most talented are the most haunted. To whom much is given, much is expected. I know why so much has come through my life. I'm an ordinary child. And I'm a special creation. And I'm a wonderful, handsome child of God. I know my heart is beautiful. I know. So that's, I'm not surprised when all these attacks are coming left, right, and center. But he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. If I can overcome and stay strong, this is what that came to me. Child of God, you can overcome as well. You can stand strong. You are an overcomer. You're a survivor. You can survive as well. You can pick up your Bible and begin to do I'm doing even better. Stand up. I encourage you. Stand up. Because out of the broken pieces of your past life, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah Esh Okula, Jehovah El Gibor can build an edifice of hope. Stop looking at the bigness of your problems. Look at the bigness of he that called you. He that called you is able. It's not how far, but how well. God gives wealth. That's why the Yoruba says, Uluwa Otobi, Uluwa Ifemi. God is great. God is life. God is favor. Uluwa hmm? Ano. God is merciful. Chukwe Buka. Nothing is greater than God. Jehovah God is too great. Jehovah Bedishi. God is wonderful. Jehovah from Genaya too much. Our God is awesome. We need to be thanking him if no matter the situation we are passing through. When you're penniless, say I'm rich. When you're cobbler, say I'm rich. When you don't even have a city, say I'm rich. Claim it. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth to speak. It's not what goes into the man that let them all come out and say it is well with me. Then it is well with you. Say I'm saved. Walk into it, practice it, you become saved. Say I'm rich. Once you say it out, the spiritual realm establishes you become rich. You work hard. Start confessing your thoughts. That are good, then they begin to manifest. And see, they are on our face. The feces does not smell in the stomach. It's when only when it comes out. Therefore, child of God, I ask you, come out, come out, celebrate your talent, shine in use, go out evangelism, go to the nooks and crannies of the world, print trans, do evangelism, use your talent, use your glory, use your beauty, use your position, use your permission, use your qualification, use your family background, use your training, use your orientation, use your profession to glorify God. You're a footballer, begin to minister to people in the football pitch. You're a coach, begin to minister to them. Pray. Talk to them about God. You're a preacher, pilot, aeronautic engineer, mechanic, whatever you are, lecturer, teacher, does be man, whatever you are, soldier, army, police, politician, MP, president, senator, governor, house of rep, chief whip, whatever you are, monitor, whatever you are, course rep, stand up and begin to glorify God. Say, Moses, Moses, what do you have in your hand? Moses says, it's a staff. See, use it. Hit it. And let the sea divide. Let my people cross. 
The staff in your hand today is the talent God has given to you. The staff in your hand today is the authority, is the calling, is the glory, is the conviction, is the word of God planted in your heart. When I was with, I remember when people are preaching on the TV or wherever, watching them, I said, they're not, they're not doing it well. By saying they're not doing well, that means God has put it upon my heart, a burning desire to go and do it better. That I can stand to that and talk to millions. Different countries, Germany, France, Denmark, Sweden, Turkey, Egypt. I've traveled to different even now UK, preaching the word of God, child of God. As I'm preaching, if you feel like there are certain ways I'm preaching, I'm not getting it well. Maybe this is how it's supposed to be better. Then that means God has put a conviction in you. That's a sign that you have a calling. If you feel like I'm not even picking it from different perspectives that should maybe make you, make you happy, then begin to pick up and begin to correct me where I'm, where, I'm, where I'm not doing it better. You can do better than me. You can preach better than me. Stand up, I challenge you. I encourage you. Stand up and pick up your Bible and begin to proclaim the good news. That desire is in you. I prophesy to you and I receive that power, receive the authority, receive the glory, receive the anointing to become that which God wants you to be, to begin to provide the word of God, to receive your professorship, your prof prophecy, to receive your power, you know, your apostleship, your, your, your servantship, your child of Godship. Receive that power, receive the power to become the prophet, to become the prophetess, to begin the, become the evangelist, to become the preacher, to become the reverend, to become the man, the woman God has called you to be. Receive that power to fulfill your destiny in this land as I'm fulfilling my own now. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Child of God, yes. God can help you to you know, give you the authority to overcome the powers that oppose your glory, that oppose your calling, that oppose your destiny, that oppose your qualification, that oppose your marriage, that oppose your children, that oppose your background, that oppose your life, that oppose the decision of God for your life, that oppose the perfect will of God for your life. God can give you authority to overcome them. Receive that power, the authority to overcome that. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. It is well. Isaiah 31 verse 3 says, The Jesus are men, not God. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, they shall all fail. My prayer that every power working against your glory, working against your children, working against your miracles, working against your upliftment, working against your sanctification, working against your divine settlement in marriage and in, in, in practice, may that power begin to fail now. In Jesus' precious name, pray. Amen. They may seem strong, but their strength has departed. Praise the Lord. Don't look at the bigness of the enemies, that empty vessel that make the biggest noise. Imagine that stupid Goliath. Bam, bam, we are coming. Some people that have little faith, when they see the, the giant, they run away. David is saying, who are your circumcised Philistines that are coming to you know, insult my God? Today, God shall disgrace you. I come to you in the name of God of Israel. And what happened? It's like that catapult. What happened? Him. He hit his forehead. The man. The same, the same knife, the same, you know, the same knife Gloria was coming to use that come and stab. The same knife is what David used to cut his head. Lift up your hand, child of God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. That the same knife the enemy is coming to use to kill us. May God's word that is mighty from our mouth be turned into, you know, into a pebble to go and hit the enemies. And may the enemy's head be cut off with their own knife, with their own weapons. In Jesus' precious name we pray. That part I want to destroy you and your family. I want to destroy you and your ministry. I want to destroy you and your calling. I want to destroy you and your qualification. I want to destroy you and your job. Destroy you and your children. Destroy your glory, your choir, your destiny. This land. May the glory of God hey, be turned into a pebble that will go and hit these enemies. That God hit them. And when they fall down, may the word of God become our armor. Become our armor to cut off their head. To cut off their head to the glory of Jehovah Elohim. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. It is well with you, child of God. It is well. Numbers 14 verse 9 it says, Neither fear the people, for they are bred for us. Mm. Their defense is parted from them. They are bred for us. Don't fear the enemies. Their powers are departed. Her body has now, but they're not what they say they are. They don't have powers. They are empty drawers that make the biggest noise. All power on earth in heaven and above and below has been given to Jesus. And Jesus Christ has called us to become part of him. Jesus in us, the help of our glory. Christ in me is the hope of, hope of my glory. I'm not speaking my word. I'm speaking the word of Christ. The word God has left for us here at Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm proclaiming the good news as he said I should. He said, go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. May God be in your front and at your back. May God be beside you in Jesus' name we pray. May God be in your front and at your back. May God be beside you in Jesus' name we pray. Child of God, you that's watching now, may God be in your front and your back. May God be beside you in Jesus' name we pray. May Elohim be in your front and on your back. May Elohim be beside you in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Don't fear them. Don't fear the monsters. Don't fear the family enemies. Don't fear the household enemies. Don't fear the witches and the wizard. Don't fear the mobster. Don't fear the gang people. 
Don't fear the armed robber. Don't fear kidnappers. Don't fear the assassins. Don't fear the people that poison people. Don't fear them that send arrows. Don't fear the cabal that empty drums that make the biggest noise. He that is in you as a Christian is greater than he that is in them. And may the word of God in you begin to speak. Words that, you know, put on the enemies and glorify God and bring safety and liberty to us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Neither fear the people, for they are brave for us. Their defense is parted from them. Numbers 14 verse 9. Now, Jeremiah 46 verse 17. Big word. Jeremiah 46 verse 17 says something, child of God. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is but a noise. He had passed the time appointed. His time is up. Somebody say his time is up. His time is up. Mm. Jeremiah 46 verse 17 says, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is but a noise. He had passed the time appointed. His time is up. Our enemy's time are up. That has been oppressing you has packed the appointed time prepared for him for her. For such, their time is up in Jesus' name. Pray. Their time is up. Their time of oppression is up. Their time of making to be depressed is up. Their time of enslaving is up in the name of Jesus. Receive your liberty now. Receive your power. Receive your authority. Receive the anointing power of God. I release to you now. I release to you now. I release to you now. The power to be healed, to be delivered, to be uplifted, to be sanctified, to marry and settle down, to get your children, to get your promotion, to get your visa, to get your permission, to get your liberty, to get your security, to get your sanctification, to get your qualification, to get your edification, to get your upliftment, to get your divine satisfaction, to get your properties in the name of Jesus. Amen. He that called you is able, child of God. He that called is omnipotent God, is omnipresent God, is omniscient God, is Jehovah Rofeka, Jehovah Adonai, Afungwe Lotena, Omakan Sebiwa, Jeba Tunegu, Olori Heloreyi, Otibudi Dianira Gweya, Eo, Tukum Jemono, Oto Anasu Inabela, Oba Jirigwe Oyanku, Jehovah the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega, Mighty God in Battle, the God that fights, you know, without weapons, the God that will let things and they come to pass. The God that speaketh and they come to pass. The God that is life. The God that is love. The God of mercy. The ocean of mercy and the sea of love. That is our God, Jehovah Elohim, the God of Israel. He is my personal God. I'm his personal best friend. He's my personal best friend. No matter my foolishness, God's love is too much for me. God's love is too much for me. I cannot quantify it. I cannot qualify it. God's love for me is too much. The kind of wisdom he put upon my life is too much. Eternity is not enough to thank this God. God is great. God is the greatest. God is the greatest. God is the greatest. Therefore, bow to him. And let him take care of your enemies. Bow to him. Because the time of the enemies are up. Time of oppression is up. Time of depression is up. Time of slavery is up. Time of taking your properties up. Time of that barrenness is up. Time of the sickness is up. Time of confusion is up. Time of insecurity is up, child of God. You can stand because I would go want you to be. Rise up from that seat of bondage. Rise up from the seat of sickness. Rise up from the seat of despair. Rise up and dust yourself. Stand up. Rise up. Rise up because your time to be lifted up has come. Rise up because the time of the enemies is up. Rise up. Don't give up, child of God. Rise up. Don't give up. Don't mess up and set up. Don't give up because you belong to the top. It is not over until you win. And may winning be, be victory be our portion now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your glory can only be shown, you know, at the presence of God. Once you're in the presence of God, you're radiating favor, life, mercy, beauty, healing, breakthrough. Look out. I don't want to enjoy a lone child. That's why I'm telling you, come into my father's house. In my father's kingdom, there's many mansions. In my father's house, there's healing, there's breakthrough, there's favor, there's mercy. Come and join me and enjoy. Come have the kind of peace I'm having. Come and have extra angels guiding you. Come and partake in the glory and the peace God gives. The world cannot give you peace. God cannot give you trouble. Come to the presence of God. Come, let us obey God together. Come, let us worship in truth and spirit. Come, let us adore him. Your insomnia will be over. Your anorexia will be over. Your dyslexia will be over. Your sickness will vanish you now. Come, let us worship God. And those things that disappointed you will regret that they disappointed you. Come, let us worship Jehovah Elohim, child of God. Stop worshipping beauty. There is no power there. Stop worshipping man. Stop worshipping men. Stop worshipping the directors, your lecturers. Stop worshipping your brothers and sisters that are rich. Stop worshipping the powerful people. They die as well. Worship him alone. Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah Adonai. Jehovah Esh Okula. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Egibor. Jehovah Eha Shamayim. The God of Israel. The God of David. The God of Isaac. The God of Joseph. The God of Jonathan. 
the God that gives true friendship, the God of Mordecai, the God of Esther, the God of Hannah, he is the real God. He is the real God. The God of Elijah, the God of Elisha, the God of Daniel. Mr. Shekhar about Nego. That is your God. The Father of Jesus Christ. That God that Jesus Christ is called Abba Father. Say Eli, Eli, Lama Sabatani. That is the real God. That God, Jesus Christ, he called my father, my father. That is the real God. That God that pampers me. That God that chose me. Despite my weakness and my, you know, all the, the troubles I passed through life growing up. That God that chose me. That God that coming from my mother's womb. That is the real God. Jehovah Esh Okula, the consuming fire. May he begin to consume every problem into our lives in Jesus. Don't pray. May he consume our anxieties, our failure, our depression, our suicidal tendencies. May he consume every power of pressing our glory in the name of Jesus. May he consume our domestic troubles in Jesus. Don't pray. Amen. When you humble yourself, you come away as empty as you are. God will clothe you. God will glorify his name through you. God can use you to speak his word. God can use you to preach. God can use you to win souls. God can use you to direct his people. God can pick you as a judge. God can pick you as a leader. He said the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Join us, join the God's command, join the God's brigade. Let us do exploits for God. So that at the end of the day, God will say, Welcome, my powerful, beautiful children. Welcome, my handsome children. You have done my will. Come to the powerful place I prepared for you and enjoy with me etern eternally. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May this be our portion now forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jeremiah 46 verse 17 says, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is but a noise. He had passed the time appointed. Appointed, His time is up. Father, lift up your hand, child of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for listeners and viewers of this program. People that are watching on YouTube, people are watching on television, people are watching on the website or internet. Whatever people are watching from all over the world now, I pray for your peace. I pray for your grace. I pray for your mercy. I pray for your authority. I pray for your wisdom. I pray for your understanding. I pray for your divine enablement, oh God. I pray for joy that knows no bounds. Let this joy begin to visit us, Papa. Let it begin to saturate our spirit. Let it begin to incubate our life. Let it begin to remove what needs to be removed in our life. And begin to add what needs to be added. So that we can stand worthy before you to glorify, to worship you. Now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever in Jesus' name we pray. Man. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green passion. He leaves me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. You are than your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before for me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And to you that is watching now, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. May the peace of the Lord be upon us now forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, child of God. God bless us in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. It is well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let us sing a few songs before we go. All the glory must be to the Lord. For He is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord, to the Lord. All the glory must be to the Lord. Elohim, for he is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. Ba 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 oh, eshe o ba ba oh, eshe o ba ba. How I do be ba ba. Hello, 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 Elohim. We thank Elohim. We thank Elohim. We are grateful, Elohim. Hello, 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 Elohim. We thank you, Elohim. We thank you, Elohim. We are grateful, Father.
Adam. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift our holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Our Redeemer. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jehovah Elohim. You are worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift our holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. How excellent is your name, oh God. Oh, how excellent is your name, oh God. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name, oh God. Oh, my Father, how excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. Oh God. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Do something wonderful in our lives. Oh God. Do something wonderful in our lives. Do something miraculous in our lives. Do something more faithful in our lives. Oh God, we cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. Oh God, we cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. We cannot succeed without you. Oh God. I shall die, I shall die. Elohim and Adonai. A to eight, you see the same. By the power of your name. I shall die, I shall die. Elohim and Adonai. How we praise and live to high. I shall die, I shall die, I shall die. Elohim and Adonai, age to age, you see the same by the power of your name. I shall die, I shall die. Elohim and Adonai, how we praise and live to high. I shall die. May the words we had now because salvation, not condemnation. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. It is the peace of God to us now forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, man. This is what we talk about, the Spirit now. Let us rejoice in the presence of the Lord. May God go before us, go with us, and go after us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you. And may your friend, Kana Yamanko, child of God, God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray, man. To get to the website, go to lifeandfeverassembly.org. You can get the website and the numbers and other preachers and our activities. Go lifeandfeverassembly.org or check us, you know, Life and Fever Assembly on YouTube. God bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Man. And people that are calling for prayer, prayer lines, go to the website, lifeandfeverassembly.org. You can get the you know, numbers to call and all those things. May His favor be upon us now and forever. My name is the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless us all in Jesus' name we pray. Man. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. God bless us in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. It is well. God bless you, sir. <laughs> it was worth it as well. Yeah.